You need more glucose. Glucose is already stored in our body. So how do we get more oxygen to our muscles? Respiration, that's one, and? Vasodilation and the increase in heart rate. That's why there's a sympathetic response. Likewise, if you're going to flee the room, you need muscles for your legs. You're going to run. You need more blood to your legs. And that's why there's an increase in heart rate. So that's what you mean by increase myocardial demand. Because when the heart starts beating faster, it needs more blood itself. Remember the blood, although the heart pumps blood, it also has its own blood vessels, what we call the coronary vessels. So it needs more, okay, it needs more blood. The problem is, because the heart is beating so fast, it shortens the filling time of the heart. Remember, the heart may be beating faster, but fluid can only go so fast. And what happens there? There's a reduced cardiac output, or what's called a forward stroke volume. There's, re there's a reduction there. That's why, for those of you who have not exercised for a long time, and suddenly you exercise, do you know what happens to you the next day? Muscle pain, Muscle pain right? Your, your body is aching all over. Why is that? Okay, when you exercise, a lot of oxygen is required, then? Okay, you're on the right track, okay? You're correct. A lot of, a lot of oxygen is needed when you exercise. Uh, a lot more blood is needed. But remember, even if there's tachycardia, there's a reduction in the cardiac output or the stroke volume. So what happens? By the way, cardiac output is stroke volume times the heart rate, okay? So because there's a reduction in the stroke volume, what happens? There is less oxygen going to your muscles. If less oxygen goes to your muscles, can your muscles still burn glucose? Actually, the answer is yes. But the problem is, if there is no oxygen or minimal oxygen, that's what's called anaerobic metabolism. And an anaerobic metabolism, you're already, sorry, you're not college level anymore. You're post grad. Remember that for, for bio, I think this will be taken up in bio. They are so freaking long. Okay? Okay, so oxidative phosphorylation is how you get ATP from carbohydrates and oxygen. Now, even if there is no oxygen, you can still get ATP by a process known as substrate level. Phosphorylation, okay? Please to write the word. Okay. Phos substrate level phosphorylation. The problem with anaerobic metabolism or substrate substrate level phosphorylation is there is a byproduct as well. Not just ATP is produced. Very good. Lactic acid is also produced. Because lactic acid is produced. The lactic acid gets deposited in your muscles, and that's what gives you the muscle pain. Okay? The problem with the heart is you, it's not a good thing for the heart to start producing lactic acid. Okay? And we'll learn if, hopefully, we'll learn as we go by uh, what conditions can actually happen if the heart uh, cannot fulfill its myocardial demand. Okay. Now note, for sinus tachycardia, usually what happens is there's situations of increased physiologic demand for oxygen, like exercise for stress, okay? Like when you guys have exams, like five exams at the same time, 
there. Okay, they probably have sinus tachycardia. Because there is increased sympathetic nerve stimulation. An increase in temperature. For every one Fahrenheit increase in temperature, your heart rate can go up by 10 beats per minute. And for every one degree Celsius, it can be up to 18 beats per minute. Why is that so? Because what's the formula for converting? Uh, 9 by C is equal to 32 by 1. That's right, 20. 9 by C is equal to 32 by 1. Okay, the easier formula. <laughs> the cheap way to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit is to times it by 1.8 plus 30. Okay, times it by 1.8. Take whatever Celsius, for example, 20 Celsius, degree Celsius, times it by 1.8, add 30 to it, and you get your power. Okay, so that's the reason why it's 10 and 18. So, other conditions like hyperthyroidism. What's hyperthyroidism? You have an excess of thyroid hormones, which will increase your metabolism. That's why there is tachycardia. Of course, myocardial infarction or MI, heart failure, pulmonary embolism, medications like the penetrin. What's another name for penetrin? Don't say epi, that's the short form name. Adrenaline, very good. Okay, adrenaline and, sorry, sorry for the long wrong spelling. This is caffeine, excessive caffeine. You drink too much coffee, you go into tachycardia. I drink too much coffee, that's why I'm always tachycardia. Okay, so, but remember this, in babies and neonates, when you say neonates, up to how many days is the baby? Up to, no, not 100 days, it's 28 days. Okay, up to 28 days, a baby is called, from the time the baby is born up to 28 days of life, they're called neonates. So for neonates, it's 100 to 160 per Okay? Okay, so sinus tachycardia, this is what it looks like. Note, okay? Now, unfortunately, if, if the heart, or for example, if the heartbeat is too fast, if the heart rate is too fast, sometimes the QRS can actually obliterate the mean wave on ECG. Okay? Remember, the reason why the P wave comes for the QRS is because there's a physiologic delay at the AV node. That's what creates the space between the P wave and the QRS. But because there's no physiologic delay anymore, I mean, because the heart, the ventricles are beating so fast, sometimes the ventricles can beat almost at the same time with the atrium does. Okay? You would usually see this in heart rates somewhere around 180 to 250 beats per minute. Okay? That is mega fast. But this one's not so fast. Okay? Now, sinus bradycardia is the other way around. The heart rate is less than 60. Results in reduced cardiac output and breaking this rhythmia. Before I mention well trained athletes, what effect slows down the heart? The opposite of sympathetic, parasympathetic. So please note this, okay? Sympathetic is, is for excitation. If you're excited about something, okay? I know the correlation I always use, especially in psychology, is when you see the person you are attracted to or the person you love, okay? I mean, you're normally, you're, oh, mm, mm. well, let's just say, yeah, you're in love with this person, and you're just walking along, and then suddenly he or she walks on by. So your heart rate, and then suddenly you see her, and then she comes closer to you. That goes quickly on the sound, okay? The closer and closer that person gets to you, the faster and faster your heart rate goes. Okay? That's an excitation. Now, if you are sleepy, okay, and, I, and um, what's this? Probably I will see this when we have a Thursday class. When you are sleepy in the 